Hey guys, I'm Lucas Botkin. I shoot quite a lot for my job and I use the T-Rex Arms speed belt the most of any of the equipment that I'm using. I shoot a lot more pistol than carbine. I shoot like two thirds pistol, one third carbine. So typically when I'm running one of these belts, I've got at least two pistol mag carriers, sometimes a third, depending on how much pistol shooting I am doing. And I go and do the majority of my training from a setup like this. Uh, because of this, I have three different belt setups and they're all kind of set up a little bit differently. And part of this is to save time and constantly reconfiguring because as some of you guys know, when you have a, a plethora of different mag pouches for like if you maybe have something for AK mags and you've got different tourniquet pouches, maybe you want a dump pouch, maybe not. Um, it just gets annoying when you're constantly mollying pouches to belts and stuff. I have definitely spent my fair time of doing that. Uh, so first off, the belt that I use uh, the most is going to be this guy right here. It's a very simple setup. I'm running the Mars carriers as my primary magazine carrying solution. So I have a couple right here set up for Glock magazines uh, and I have them angled based on how far forward uh, they're positioned on the belt. They're going to be more angled. And then as they gradually get here to the side, they're going to be less angled. And it's just for natural body mechanics to use uh, fancy terms, uh, but also just to be nice and comfortable uh, when reloading uh, and efficient as well. On this belt, I have a 5.56 uh, mag carrier, which will hold any standard Stainag 5.56 magazine. I run rounds rearward, coat can grip. Uh, when I run from a plate carrier, I'm going to be doing index uh, grip. Uh, but this is a super fast way of running a rifle mag reload. And then what I'm also doing off of this belt right here is if I'm wanting a third mag pouch for some reason, because I just want to carry more ammo as I go down range, I can just grab another Mars carrier that has a tech lock that opens up just like so. And this one, as you'll see, is straight up and down, or more or less. Clip that in, and now I have three mags. I can even go up to four if I really want to do that. I generally don't, because I don't need that much pistol ammo. Uh, but three mags like this, it's nice and comfortable. It's not too much weight. And if I am shooting a drill that requires me reloading all three mags, I can do that pretty easily. So this one right here is pretty slick. I don't have a bunch of like med pouches and stuff like that on it. Um, I do have this tourniquet carrier uh, that we recently started offering. What I really like about this particular setup is it carries the tourniquet horizontally. So I don't feel it, you know, when you run a tourniquet or any sort of pouch long ways um, vertically, you'll kind of feel it rubbing into your back or if you like sit in a vehicle, it feels kind of weird. Um, if you're like starting a drill from inside of a car or something, uh, running a horizontal pouch is just a lot more comfortable um, and it snags on stuff a lot less. So having a horizontal tourniquet pouch is super nice. Uh, the other thing I like about this particular pouch is I have some elastic on the top and bottom for chem lights. If I want to do some accountability on the range, I'll be honest, I haven't cracked a chem light on a night range in years. Uh, Cause typically the people I'm shooting with at night, we, we know what's going on. We know where we are. Uh, we're not running chem, chem lights and strobes and stuff. Um, in the past when I've done night shoots at like competitions and stuff, uh, yeah, everyone has a red chem light and good. Uh, but for what we're doing on our range, we typically don't. Uh, I carry a Sharpie on me pretty much at all times for marking hits on targets or drawing like a little spot to zero. So I really like having a black Sharpie. It's just super useful. Uh, and I know there's a lot of practical uses for that as well for like medical stuff and whatnot. But that could just slip down here. Um, so I could do a little bit more with this pouch than just hold a tourniquet. And that's what I really like about it. Um, on all my belts, I'm running a Safari Land UBL. Uh, this positions the holster at a very nice, or the pistol at a very nice uh, height that's going to be parallel with the belt itself. So it's not so low that I'm having to move my hand and my arm extra to get to the pistol if I'm transitioning from a rifle. And it's not so high I'm having to hyperextend my elbow to get to the gun either. It's that perfect, for me and for most people, it's that perfect height that gives you uh, good speed, uh, but also isn't cramping uh, your arm, you know, running the pistol really high or FBI can't or something weird and government like. Um, so I'm running the uh, QLS uh, receiver plate. What this allows me to do is uh, change out my holsters easily. Um, I shoot a lot of different handguns. In this case, my main, like these belts all go in a mystery ranch bag and I keep the same holsters with me at all times, but I have uh, a Ragnarok that's non-light compatible. So if I'm just shooting no light competition, carry optics style, um, I know lights are allowed now, but I shoot a lot of no light at all. I uh, just drop this guy on. I've got him. If I want to run a weapon light, I've got my X300 Ragnarok right here. This one I've used for years and it's quite beat up. If I want to run a suppressor holster like the Ragnarok SD, I can always drop that on there. 
I then run my suppressed pistol. Um, or if I go to shoot a different handgun, like a Beretta or a P320 or something like that, if I wanna blow my hands up, um, I can throw that holster on there, change out my mag carriers, and then I'm good to go. So you'll see that this belt is super minimalist. I don't have a whole lot of stuff going on. Uh, that's because when I'm on the range, I don't need a bunch of stuff. Uh, operational use, that's a different story, but I'm not talking about that. Um, another thing that's super handy and that our belt can do is there is a loop here where the Raptor buckle is, and it is perfect for fitting a little ITW clip. Um, and I can use, uh, have electrical tape. I use this tape to cover my optics to shoot occluded. Um, I use this tape to, again, indicate areas on targets um, or add a little place to visualize as I am shooting, depending on what I'm doing. Um, I use it to fix my fingers. If I split them open, I use electrical tape for all kinds of things. It's not just for breachers. But the other cool thing is if you do have a clip up front, you can also have a pair of gloves. So there's another way that I run a pair of gloves. Um, I know there's some companies that make little Velcro, like little squares and stuff, and they charge like 30 bucks for them, where you can like Velcro it here, and it gives you an HK clip. Uh, very similar to what the Orion belt can do. That's cool, uh, this is a whole lot cheaper. Don't go spend a bunch of money on one of those unless it's absolutely what you want. This belt over here is sort of my larger uh, belt setup. Um, you'll notice I don't have a med kit on these typically. Um, I do have a med one that kind of floats around and I put on there sometimes. Uh, typically because I have access to medical at all times um, nearby. Um, I've also used a fanny pouch, like a fanny pouch kit for medical as well. Uh, and then I also just have medical on plate carriers. So I'm not always running meds off of my belt. Uh, this is a horizontal tactical tailor pouch. What's nice about this is it's just super simple. I can put things in it, like my headlamp. Uh, this is usually the belt I use if I'm doing night shooting. Um, I've got some chem lights in there, some IR, some Viz. I can throw some snacks in there and some other crap batteries, you know. Uh, this pouch is just there to put whatever I need at the time into this pouch. I'm not necessarily preloading it. But this is sort of my night shooting belt. Uh, this pouch will sometimes have a handheld flashlight, or in this case, I've got a multi-tool. Um, and then I have room available to then add my different mag carriers, whether it's three pistol, two pistol, one rifle, um, a different kind of rifle mag pouch. Uh, the three that I use right now is either a Mars carrier for 5.56 mags, an HSGI Taco if I'm running AK mags because it fits uh, every single AK mag out there. Uh, if I'm running 308, I use the ITW Fast Mag. Uh, for 7.62. I'm not sure if they make these anymore, but they're pretty good. Uh, I have to modify it a little bit with electrical tape, adjust the retention a little bit. Uh, but in this case, I can run a SR25 pattern, M110 pattern magazine, uh, Scar Mag, just fine. Um, so I have this set up for some DMR stuff that I've been doing. And then again, two mags. Sometimes I drop one if I just want to go a little slicker when it comes to prone work, um, just not have some extra mags over in the front. Uh, and then same thing, I've got a Ragnarok a UBL QLS combo with a thigh strap. And again, I can always swap out what holsters I'm using, run a Safari Land, run some other weird thing. And then this belt right here that I'm wearing, this is my uh, USPSA belt. So one of the stupid things about USPSA, there's a lot of things that's stupid about USPSA right now with the organization and what's going on. Um, USPSA as a shooting sport is the best way to get good at shooting. One of the stupid rules they have is thigh straps are not allowed because they're too militaristic which is ridiculous because everyone's running around shooting militaristic uh, pistols, handguns, weapons, uh, but a thigh strap's not allowed. So these belts right here are not USPSA legal. So I have another speed belt that is just set up as my dedicated USPSA belt. Uh, the other thing that I'm doing a little bit differently is I'm not running the QLS. Uh, there's some rules about how far the pistol has to sit to your hip bone. You can't run your gun like all the way out to here. You have to keep it somewhat close. If you run a UBL with rubber washers attached directly to the Ragnarok, uh, your competition legal. I've run this in matches, it's not a problem. Um, so no thigh strap going on here. And then this belt is actually the, one of the first uh, prototypes, which I'll show you guys. Uh, we don't make this in multi-cam black, this is just a prototype. Um, and it's going strong now, I think we're at three and a half years. Uh, I don't think we're at four, I think we're at like three and a half years, three years. Uh, going strong, usually have a few mag carriers and that's it. Nothing complicated. But as you can see, you could take the speed belt and go from something like this, just a standard competition belt, and you can upscale it to something a little bit more substantial with admin pouches, you know, multi-tool pouches, 308 mags, pistol mags, uh, your holster, uh, just a lot of different options. You can run, you have your gloves, have your, you can run your chem lights in the front if that's what you wanted. Um, the other cool thing about this belt is there are the Molly pass-throughs on the backside. And you'll see right here, I have two different Molly pouches and I'm taking advantage of that. The Molly, the, the mouse clip is actually going 
through or on top of the belt, through the pass-through, back into the molly, into the clip. So I have a good use of the molly itself, and I'm actually suspending the weight of the pouch off of the entire belt, not off of molly that's sewn on the top. Same with the multi-tool pouch, same with the ITW Fast Mag that's actually wrapped around underneath the pass-through, and that keeps it from sliding around. Um, and so that's super stable to the body, and that's just something about this belt that I really like, and that uh, is, is, is pretty cool. There's one maintenance thing to consider if you are running a speed belt, and that is the tubular webbing that attaches to the uh, Raptor buckle um, that you're gonna use to adjust the tightness of the belt. Uh, it becomes frayed over time. Uh, now, with testing and just using the belt like that one right there, uh, it's a very simple fix. Uh, to solve this and it's not really destroying the structural integrity of the belt itself. Uh, but I'm just going to take a lighter. I'm just going to burn all this down, uh, make it nice and smooth again. And uh, it's a pretty, pretty simple process. I'm going to bring this lighter up towards my hand like an idiot. Burn my fingers probably. Just clean that up. Same thing, this edge, you'll see all this just fuzz. There's also some fuzz here on the front. A little bit here on the back. And it's pretty much good as new. A little bit right here. It just cleans it up, gives it a little bit more of a professional appearance, kind of back to where it was originally. And again, your, the tubular webbing is still good to go. It's still going to hold uh, the buckle just fine. Um, I usually do this like once every six months on the belt, just kind of clean it up a little bit, clean up the edges. I just did it on that one. Uh, this guy over here I did a while ago and it's still fine. Uh, so that's one thing to take into account, take into consideration. Uh, the, the Velcro hook itself doesn't wear out. It's typically the loop of your inner belt that actually will start to wear out with time. Um, that is something to consider, and that's also why we sell the inner belt separate from the outer. Um, after using these for a couple of years, your inner belt might be kind of the loop Velcro just kind of starts to lose its fuzziness. Uh, the belt may not attach super well, and that's when you just want to change out your inner belt and get a new one. Um, and that's going to happen to every company's inner belt. If it's using Velcro, standard Velcro, it's going to wear out. Good news is the hook doesn't really wear out too much. It's usually the loop Velcro, but that's the cheap part. That could be replaced pretty easily. Hope that was helpful, guys, just going over a few different belt setups. Maybe it gave you guys some ideas for how to set up yours. Um, ultimately, you should be building your kit out around what you need, not what you think you might need. Uh, so if you are on the range a lot, uh, build out your kit based on what you're doing on the range. Um, if you're an operational guy and you already know what kind of stuff that you're doing down range, well then you're obviously going to build your kit out for that. Uh, for the average civilian such as myself, um, I don't know exactly what sort of operational situation I could get into or what I could be in in the future, So, I'm, but I'm probably not building out my belts anticipating those scenarios right now. I can always build out my belts for that later whenever I actually know what's going on. For now, I'm just building my belts out for more efficient training on the range. Like that's the objective. Later on, if I go, yep, I should have a med pouch on every belt. Um, I need two rifle mags. I need three pistol mags. I need whatever. Well, some a modular piece of equipment like this uh, that utilizes pouches that are easy to remove uh, and add will allow me to do that. But for now, the mission is the most efficient training as possible. And that's why the speed belt is my go-to. If you have any other questions about the speed belt or other products out there, go ahead and email us at team at trex-arms.com.